Welcome to my 2023 beginner's guide for the Isle of Rima. If you're a new player or considering in buying the game, I really hope this helps and without wasting any of your time, let's get right into the video. Once you have bought the game on Steam, you want to come over to your Steam library. Find the Isle and right click on it. Then head down to the Betas tab and choose Evrima where it will currently say None. Evrima will begin to install and once installed you can launch up the game and play. The reason you have to do this is because there are two versions of the game, Legacy and Evrima. If you bought the Isle and were wondering why your game looked different, now you know. This step will change you over to Evrima. Also, you may find an issue where you cannot play Evrima as it says Easy Against Cheat is not installed. To fix this, you want to come over to Isle, right click, go to Local Files, press Browse, come down here, you see this .bat file, install Easy Against Cheat, you just double click it and your problem solved. Now that you are finally in the game, hit play and you will see a variety of official servers. I would recommend pressing the ping button in the top right in order to play on servers closest to you and have the least amount of lag. The official servers are owned by the devs and are currently my favourite servers to play on. This is due to me not being able to find an unofficial server I can fully enjoy, however, that may not be the same for you. There's a few unofficial servers that are popular, so I'll just show you right now how to access them. Okay, come over to the right, hit the session filter, go down to unofficial. Then you just want to hit refresh. Now you can try the ping trick again like I showed before, but as you'll see, there's one problem with that. All the servers closest to you won't have the most players on it unless you're very lucky. So what you're going to have to do is come over here and hit players. Then as you can see, you can now see all the most popular servers and choose whichever one you want to play on. Some of them have different rules, some of them have none at all. So you're really going to have to go through and decide which one is best for you. Personally, I would say Islander server is the best, however, you might find it has too many rules. When it comes to choosing a dino, it can be a tricky task for a new player. For carnivores, I would suggest choosing the carno. The dino is going to take way too long to grow, and there are lots of players who are cannibals who are just waiting to kill new players. In the current state of the game, I would not recommend the Omniraptor, it's way too weak. When it comes to herbivores, the Stegosaurus is an absolute beast. The problem is, if you try and play as it, it's going to take you way too long to grow, you're going to get bored, and you're going to get killed a lot as a baby Stego. The Patchy, however, is a very strong dino, its headbutt ability can break bones of other dinosaurs, and it grows very, very fast. The second herbivore I'd recommend is the Tenno. It's got a back leg kick which does a ton of damage, and a tail ability which can stun its enemies, making it the perfect defensive dino. Personally, there's only two spawn zones I would really recommend. That would be the center and then northeast. Northeast has got a lot of food and lack of players, however the center has got more players, so if you're looking for PvP, you know where to go. This game's controls are pretty basic. All you need to know is W, A, S and D is walking around, and space is to jump. Bear in mind some dinos can't jump, so you just have to test that out. Left click on your mouse will be your main hit ability, or a bite depending on which dino you're playing. Press right click to use your special ability. This will change depending on which dino you're playing, so you'll have to figure that out as well. Scrolling forwards and backwards with a mouse wheel will also zoom in and out. Hold down shift on your keyboard in order to sprint. You will notice this uses up a lot of stamina. In order to regain stamina, you want to press Z. This will make you walk and regain stamina much quicker. You can also press H in order to lay down. The thing is with this though, I wouldn't do this unless you're in a safe spot, otherwise you may end up dead. Secondly, you can hold down H to go to sleep. Going to sleep is how you log off the game safely. You will notice if you press escape that you can press lock out. However, if you press that, your dino will still be in the world for another 60 seconds. When laying down, it takes quite some time to get back up. So I would recommend never laying down in the middle of a fight as another player will just charge you instantly. There is a way to actually get up quicker while laying down, as you'll see right here. Once you're laying down, if you just press W to get back up, it will get you up quicker. However, it will drain a considerable amount of your stamina bar. The next control on our list is V. Without this control, you will never be able to see in the night. Your night vision is very limiting and it restricts you to an area. However, some dinosaurs have longer ranges than others, and there is actually specific foods you can eat to increase your night vision range. The last important control on our list is E. Holding E when a raptor is clung onto you like this will make it run out of stamina and fall off. Then you can easily take it out. Secondly, E is also used when a dinosuchus, also known as a croc, has you in its mouth, as it will drain its stamina and make it drop you.
Moving on to calls, we have the wand key. This will do a broadcast and make all nearby dinosaurs hear you. Press this key with caution, as most of the time when you press this key, you'll find that other dinos will instantly run to your location to try and hunt you. Pressing 2 is your friendly call right here, and then if you hold down 2, that's how you invite dinosaurs of the same species to your group. Pressing 3 is your aggressive call, this is how you tell another player to back off, or that you want to fight. Lastly, we have the 4 call, this is the surrender call, however, most players will completely ignore this and attempt to kill you anyways. So just be cautious if you think this is going to help you escape death. Moving on to food and water, as soon as you get into the game, you want to hold down Q to instantly sniff out the nearest food. This line at the top of your screen is actually your compass. It will direct you to food and show you here that peak is the north and the dip is the south. There are a few different food symbols, one being bones. There is also meat. As you can see there, there's bones and there is also bones with meat on them. The leaves here is herbivore food, however what you really want to be aiming for is symbols like this S right here. This symbol right here means that this food is part of your diet, and what that means is that it will give you a series of different buffs if you eat it. These buffs can range from increased night vision to growing faster. If you want to learn more about buffs, I've currently got a guide about it on my channel and how to grow much faster. I'll put the video on screen at the end of this one. Once you get your food, just hold down E in order to eat it, or you can also press G in order to move it to a safer spot. When drinking water, you need to find a shallow spot like this one right here, as there are lots of players playing as crocodiles who are just waiting to eat you. If you can't find a spot like this, if you can find a bush that goes into the water, that is your second best alternative. However, just know crocodiles can see you when you're drinking, as there is a blue effect from the water splashing below. Moving over to the UI, we have a few important things you need to know. First of all, in the top right, that heart is your health. In the top left, this is your status report. You can see your current buffs and whether or not you have a debuff. In the bottom right, you can see your food and water bar, and also the footprint is your stamina bar. The three hexagons above it is your current diet. Like I said before, if you want to know more about diets, I've got a video on it already. Also, in the top center of your screen, you can see your weight. This is actually your health, and your bite force is your damage. Lastly, you will notice in the top right, you have some coordinates. What you want to do is click on that location, and it will copy it to your clipboard. Next, you want to come over to this website, which I'll put down in the description. Then you want to come up to this box in the top left. You want to hold down control and press V and then hit show. You can see your current location on the map and you can also then track which direction you're going using the compass in game. This website also shows a bunch of different locations you can go to that are posted by other players. It's a great way to find new monuments in the map and also food and drinking spots. As you can see here, this person has posted this cool arch they found and also this location of pumpkins which is extremely useful if it's on your diet. Also, if you move and post in your coordinates for a second time, the website will show a line tracking which direction you went. Moving into combat, there are a few things you need to know. First of all, your left click will always be your bite or scratch. Secondly, your right click is your special ability. The Utah Raptor, for example, has a pounce and it will start scratching its enemies to make them bleed, and the Kano has a charge which will knock stuff to the floor. Next we have the alt ability. Holding down alt and then clicking your right or left click will use different alt abilities. For the Tenno here, it's a tail slam. This will stun an incoming enemy and then you can back kick them to death. In case you haven't noticed the running theme here, this game doesn't like dinos having the same things. So once again, every dino is different. For the Kano here, an alt bite means turning around while biting. This will stop other dinos coming up behind you, and it's perfect for catching another player off guard when they think they're going to get a bite on you. Careful when using alt abilities though, as they use up a lot of stamina. Damage in this game is based on where you hit them. If you hit a player in the head, that's where you do the most amount of damage. Body shots also do a lot of damage, however if you hit a player in the tail, it really isn't going to do much to them. Here you can see bucking in effect once again, this raptor player tried grabbing onto me, I held E, he ran out of stamina, and he was an easy kill. The next mechanic to discuss is broken bones. Some dinosaurs can break your legs, and if this happens to you, you're going to be completely immobilized and really slow. If you get into this situation, you want to try and end the fight with them, and then leave to a bush. Once in a safe area or bush, you want to hit H on your keyboard in order to lay down. This will help you heal off your bleed or broken bones, and help you get back up to full HP. Speaking of being injured, when hit by certain attacks in this game, you're going to get a bleed effect just like this. Once you're finished with your fight, you want to find a safe area to lay down once again, until you get this plus, because unless you have that, you're going to be constantly bleeding out. If you're running around, you're going to have no stamina, and you're going to find yourself dead. If you watched this far, thank you so much for watching. I really hope this helps you get started in this game. And if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll respond to every single one.